Hello everyone, welcome back to Know the Therapist. I'm Jennifer, I'm a counseling psychologist and I'm the host of the show. Um, my guest today is Anastasia and she is right here. She is joining the live and will for the live. So yeah, that's what we're doing today and just giving Anastasia a second to join. Okay. Oh, yes, she is. Hi. Hi, Anastasia. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Can you hear and see me clearly? Yeah, perfect. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Same case for you as well. I can see you, I can hear you. Um, You look really okay. nice. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. How have you been? You're welcome. How's your day been? Uh, I'm, I'm very well. I'm very excited mm -hmm. to have you on the show. And I am looking forward to our discussion. Um, and, yeah. and, uh, more people will join, but they'll find us as we continue. Uh, so that yeah. we, can, we can save time to do other things. I know it's a, it's a weekday. And people are... It's a weekday. Middle, yeah, people are in the middle of doing things. So we don't take too much yeah. of time. But we also want them to get a lot of value out of the show. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Uh, to know the therapist, I am Jennifer Charlo. For anybody who does not know me yet, I am a casting psychologist and the host of the show. And today, my guest is Anastasia. She'll be telling us a little bit about herself and the kind of work she does. And yeah, I'm super excited for that. For that. So, Anastasia, Haribu Sana, please introduce yes. yourself to the, to the population. Okay, to the population. my. <laughs> Uh, my name is Anastasia Obonyo, um, counseling psychologist as well. Um, I am founder as, and CEO and psychologist of Tattoo, which is the Affordable Therapist Union, I, which started approximately two years ago. Uh, what else can I tell you? I am a certified counselor with the Money uh, Counseling Center and Training Institute. I've been practicing, it's going to be my third year this year. And yeah, that's just about it. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. How has this been? How has how the three years been? Challenging. <laughs> <laughs> Challenging. Tell us more. But, Tell us more. but fruitful. Okay. Um well uh okay, how can I start this? Well the third I'm gonna say the second and third year have been I think because I got into the rhythm of things. Mm -hmm. Um it's not as bad as it used to be. I figured out my schedule, I figured out um how to squeeze in my learning my supervision my own personal therapy into everything but i think that the, the beginning was challenging because i had no resources on how to actually break through into this field yeah um they were really, really helping me figure it out and so i and a friend of mine who is also a co-founder mm. uh called sharon kahumbu we had to figure it out on our own and it was it yeah. was <laughs> it was interesting um there was a lot of in the beginning, there was a lot of gatekeeping of information. I've learned that really, to be honest, a lot of the people who've helped me, you, you interviewed uh, Sarah Mwindi last week, last, was it last week? Yes. And yeah, yeah. she's one of the people who helped me. So she might not know it, but she's one of the people who helped me when I was like DMing uh, her a lot. Uh, there was a lot of gatekeeping of information, so it was challenging in the beginning. But now... I've gotten into the rhythm of it, so it's kind of nice. Um, oh, wow. It's challenging in that work is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> work is, is a lot. Need, the need is great, yeah. The need is great, yes. The need is great. There are a lot of people who need it, and there are very few of us. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's a lot. But yeah, I actually really, it's very fulfilling. I like it. Yeah. Oh, wow. I'm very curious about uh, that first year, because um, I feel that if we work past it too fast, people might think that... Um, uh, it's 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 easy even as we say it's hard people might think like it's in consequential and everything do you think that it's yeah. possible for you to dive into it and tell us um the the, okay. the biggest challenges and how you navigated them and basically yeah. just give us the tea on that first year and how you went about it because these are there's somebody who's just starting out in this field and they don't even know yeah. where to start and maybe where to start where you are please walk them through that <laughs> tell us how it starts okay so <laughs> So it started with, first off, um, I had been teaching. And as I was teaching, I was a guidance counselor. But the, the funny thing about Ministry of Health is they figured out the guidance counseling part. There are books and everything um, that can guide you on how to be a guidance counselor. They have everything 
um all you have to do is actually go to the ministry of health's website and the and KICD's web, website Ken, Kenyan Institute of Curricular Dev and you have everything now i was branching off into therapy because um number one, i actually wanted to do at, in the beginning i wanted to do therapy for children and then f- realized that i really can't because it kind of hurts a lot i couldn't i couldn't really like separate myself from the problems of the kids so i branched off to adults the problem is i did didn't even know where to begin was it i didn't even know there were um what are they called you had to be a member of, of governing boards i didn't know anything so the first person to actually help me in that place was um i reached out to a money counseling institute training institute the lady who was helping me now apply for those things was the one who was actually helping me figure out what to do so she was like you've already gotten a degree um this certification will just help in your practice um but you're with a degree you're fine and i was like okay what do you mean i'm fine like i don't understand what fine looks like where do i even start and she's like okay you apply for the certification but you need to look for a governing board and i'm like what's that now you know i'm like what what is that in that process um you know i remember i was asking my mother i was like you know when i was and we'll get into that when i was a uh, looking for a therapist i was having a hard time finding a therapist i could afford on my own um luckily enough i was on my mother's um what is it called insurance cover and therefore i could get whichever therapist i wanted unfortunately that's not what i was looking into i wanted i couldn't find therapists really on on social media um to me sorry i think i keep hearing anastasia yes can you hear me yes now i can hear you but i keep losing you i don't know if it's a network issue or somebody's calling your phone ah uh, no i'm on bundles there's nothing oh. wrong me i'm good okay, <laughs> but yeah. don't worry this is a yeah. this usually happens so don't worry too much it happens yeah yeah so, so um i asked her to... i Yeah my mother so she was like you know you on my insurance cover and I was like yeah but you know what about people who need affordable therapy and she was like okay what do you what do you mean about it and I was like I, I want to provide affordable therapy I want to be the bridge of information or or, the, or to bridge to be the one to bridge the gap between people who need affordable therapy and the therapists themselves so tattoo hadn't actually started as a private practice I just wanted to be a hub of information to be honest and then my mom <laughs> my mom has this so you see and try, you should try and find out kind of attitude so she told me she was like so you do it and i was like okay i have no idea what to do like you guys are telling me do it i don't even know what step 1 looked like so um my teacher my lecturer really at amani was the one who now was like um there are these following governing boards choose which one you're going to be with um you uh, email them and figure out the the charges they charge yearly um you have uh, different uh, levels to it you pay it etc etc i was like okay in that at that time again also i was also <laughs> bringing in my friend and an ex colleague of mine to help me start tattoo so my friend sharon kahumbu and my ex colleague who became a friend joan waweru once you go aware who so we became tattoo funnily enough tattoo three founders but also the affordable therapist union and sharon was actually the one who was the hub of information she was the one who was doing all the research she was like okay this is the governing board you guys decide which one you're paying for i okay this is what we need to do we need to come up with a rate card okay we need to um, register the business like this okay so sharon was the one who was our hub of information while for me i was strategizing i was like okay we need first of all to be known people need to figure out who we are um we also need to figure out how we're going to help other graduates figure out this information as well because if it wasn't you know you've seen the hell we've gone through just trying to figure out first of all governing boards and then second figuring out um kenya's law when it comes to practicing you know kenyan law uh, practicing as a psychologist i know the governing boards are trying to make it as a masters degree but currently with a diploma you can become a counselor with a degree you can become a psychologist um i know kenya psychological association is trying to make it now um you have to have a masters degree which is a lot of uh, the qualifications around the world you need to have a masters degree but yeah you know figuring that out and then here comes the stigma 
on you being a therapist which kind of got to us in our first year a lot of imposter syndrome because guys are like you know am i really going to pay you to talk and then you yourself don't really have the experience to sort of back up why somebody needs to pay you <laughs> and there was a lot of <laughs> you don't have that is very true. that is very true yeah that you don't have that this yeah you don't have and the experience you're busy telling Yeah, yeah, you're like give me your money and they're like what is the experience and you're like it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and there's also, also the doubt where you you're thinking um is therapy even worth all this because there's a lot of voices telling you uh why would no. you want to charge anybody to talk yes. um, and why would anybody pay me to talk and to talk. the voices of why should the people pay people to talk? You know, there's so, a lot of exactly. people telling you that this is a very small thing and you're making a big deal yeah. because you want to con people out of it. Exactly. And there was also that part. There was a lot of people saw it as us trying to con them out of their money, which was very interesting, to be honest. I was like, okay, this is, we used to get so much backlash on uh, the tattoo page. You know, you guys are just, uh, there's this one person who kept saying that, um, we are just trying to convince people to pay us to talk to them or something or the other yeah. i don't remember what that comment said and yeah you get all these voices telling you that honestly it's not worth it and you're sitting there like okay so what is this that i've gotten myself into and to be honest in that past year i had really wanted to break off from therapy yeah and then you get your first booking <laughs> your second booking your third your fourth your first recurring session your second your third your fourth and you're like okay okay wait you know it's not actually yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i'm not doing that badly off yeah. and you get recurring clients you get clients who are very excited to have met you mm. you get clients who are referring to us i always tell my clients i'm like you guys have no idea how much you've helped me because a lot of my clients are because of the first first clients i ever had yeah. their referral yeah. there are a lot of referrals a lot of referrals to the point where i just i refer them to someone else i'm like you know i'm i'm fully booked for the week try this other therapist and you know by the second year is when i realized okay I'm, i wasn't doing badly off in my first year i was actually doing quite well but with all the voices telling you that it's a first of all you even felt like you yourself you're a con man oh, like hey, the way people are talking oh yeah true true people are talking like you're a con man <laughs> Actually um I don't know about you but uh, my my biggest experience with uh, finances was um with with uh, fellow mental health professionals because um it's like there's a lot of uh, financial I, I don't know if to call it money shame or financial shame around mm. mental health and money so when you yeah. say, there, there's a lot of people who will go ahead and be like oh you're charging too much money um you're not even that experienced um you're a mental health professional yeah. you're supposed to love your job the money should not be a problem you should be offering pro bono services because there are many people who are suffering why are you spending so much money on x y and z and it's mental fellow mental health professionals and especially those yes. who have to um earn a living from therapy because they have other jobs or they have uh, maybe they work for the government and so they are or an ngo so they are salary yeah. friends um private practice was hard for me as well in the very yeah, beginning yeah yeah private practice I'm embarrassed about money I'm embarrassed about telling people to pay me yeah money. and the, yes actually thank you for mentioning that the money embar- and I didn't understand what I still up to now do not understand what that is about <laughs> because <laughs> because you 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 know it was a lot of shame around how much you're charging the fact that you have the audacity to charge the audacity to charge how yeah, are you yeah and i'm thinking what and then this question of free consultation mm-hmm. and nowadays i think because i'm in my third year i've got i've gotten a, you know a few horns here whenever somebody asks me for free consultation i'm like i have no idea what that is yeah. i don't know what you're talking about me that's a new concept could you explain to me what free consultation means because i've never heard of somebody giving free consultation and i know i'm trying to uh, uh, provide um affordable services but i realized also another thing affordable is very niche driven so i'm affordable to some people i'm expensive to some people right i'm not going to be affordable to everyone right yeah. and then yeah. the next person is going to be affordable either they're going to be affordable to me or not affordable like for example um right now where i'm at in life 
I know for sure I can afford the therapy I was going for when I was in uni. But when I was in uni, uni it was not affordable at all at all. But now I can afford it and actually that's what I'm doing. So I, I that was also something I learned. I was like, okay, I'm trying to prove to the wrong crowd that I'm affordable. Let me prove to the right people who actually see it and have been coming back for sessions that I'm affordable. These are the people I will because I'm still a hub of information, I will look for other resources to assist them with. I know um Hopewell counseling has where you apply to get pro bono services 10 sessions so i always let um uh, student clients that i have some of them know um, like while we're still even having therapy i'm like oh by the way the hopewell counseling they've opened up their applications i know pdo nakuru charges 500 bob per session the first session is 700 shillings because of the 200 bob application fee and then the uh, 500 bob for the session then after that it's 500 bob each session Um I know which other place there's another place that does free sessions and I've completely forgotten their name actually <laughs> which is kind of and then there's Niskize if you're the type of person who doesn't want this you can just call someone um so there are a lot of uh, other people that I just make sure people know about but I realize like I'm affordable to people because or else I wouldn't have clients honestly um <laughs> honestly i wouldn't have clients if i wasn't affordable and it's really dependent on what people want but yeah, yeah. that money shape i think you've mentioned it and i've just remembered i'm like hey it was <laughs> it was so bad uh, it is real it is really the mental health profession and wow there's the, the, the notion that you're supposed to because you love your job you're not supposed to be charging for it and i'm like um for you it is a basic need i understand that for me it is a source of living otherwise i'm going to sleep hungry and i don't know how that works Yeah. And 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 you know when people pull that card out I'm like have you gone to a teacher and told them that you don't want to pay school fees because it's a basic need for your child. Funny thing. And yeah. Not that you mention it. There's this uh, you saw the thing about uh, ECD teachers being paid 7000. Do you know how insulting that was? Oh yeah, it was an entire thing. It was on Twitter the other day. ECD teachers being paid 7000 shillings. Imagine getting paid 7000 shillings and you're teaching Just imagine no. the 7000 shillings honestly. I'm offended be because I was a teacher. <laughs> I'm going to think so much. That's a, you. Excuse me, seven thousand. Do you know how chaotic it is to teach? I don't It is so chaotic. About. It is so god. It's kids. It's the basic learning. It's like the beginning, the foundation of your entire life because Do you know that teacher can can learning. decide whether your child will know how to absorb information will have the correct social skills will have, that teacher is the foundation of your child's personality and you want to pay them 7000 bob that is that thing was on twitter the other day i was um, i was so offended i was so offended like i logged out of twitter i think for two days i didn't even follow that thread i was like i am done i don't want more information i cannot continue hurting myself like this it is just so painful and and to think uh, because uh, and it's this thing that we keep saying yes to to the people receiving the services it is a basic need yes they need to have the best but you have to remain, remember that the service provider is a human being and for them that is yes, a source of need that is a source of they need to live they're not going to yeah. live off your thank yous and 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 yeah. appreciation yeah. they have rent yeah. to pay they have children that they need to provide these basic needs mm. for as well yeah how did you how did you deal with the kids How with do you deal with the guilt of charging the guilt of charging, of charging. money in the beginning when you say no I, uh, to I don't your... think it was me who really dealt with it I think yeah. I was lucky enough to get really vocal clients yeah. who in the beginning who really appreciated what i was doing at the amount i was charging it for so it wasn't really me who got over the guilt i think my clients because i okay in the beginning i had really vocal clients like they're very like you know feedback oriented and because of that it helped me settle down with the fact that i'm charging and these clients are actually appreciating first of all how much i'm charging and the the, the value they're getting from the the amount i'm charging them so it was actually really them because i kept hearing that you know i was hearing comments like hey i'm so happy i found you you're so affordable i'm like oh thank goodness because <laughs> you know or or things like um i remember there is a client i had who she's okay there are a lot of clients who are way older than me but she said she was like you know in the beginning i didn't think you would know much because you're so young 
but honestly the amount of value you've given me is not worth the price you charge and i was like you have no idea <laughs> how much you saved me by saying that <laughs> they validated me because <laughs> yeah because that that feedback really helps i think yes it wasn't really me getting over it it was a lot of just hearing these uh positive feedback from people you know saying yeah. you know yeah you you're affordable i remember when i went here i couldn't really afford it um you you're affordable or yeah you know this is good i'm getting the value for my money i didn't think i'd get the value for my money etc etc yeah. so i think that's yeah. what got me to actually settle down with the fact that i can charge what i'm charging yeah. for therapy session mm-hmm. yeah 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 uh, that is just so powerful because i think it's very important i'm very curious in your opinion what is the um, education system failing when it comes to preparing counselors for the outside because um i've had many counselors wow. around virtually different and for us it's obvious that the money issue is a big deal and for the counselors it's big yes. thing but what do you think um this the the in the training that we get in school where where, where are they feeling the, the students so i keep telling people that the things i use in therapy the practice that i do i learned from my certification which i got after my degree and i feel like my degree was theory it was just a lot of it was four years of theoretical work that gave you the basis so you can label things you know yeah. you're given a list of things and you label it depression and then you're given a list of things and you're like generalized anxiety but you weren't taught how to talk to people and figure out where these list of things come into play you know what are you looking for you know you're told helplessness yeah but what does that sound like when a client is talking to you because they're not going to outrightly come and tell you i am feeling helpless no yeah. there's specific statements sentences paragraphs that are going to express that will let you know what helplessness looks mm-hmm. like you're told um you're told uh, uh or feeling overwhelmed but yeah okay there's some clients who will tell you they're feeling overwhelmed but there are some who won't say the actual word and you have to figure it out for yourself what overwhelmed looks like and then another thing individual differences i swear you're not prepared for individual differences overwhelmed for me is not overwhelmed for you yeah and you need to learn what overwhelmed looks like for each and every person what the disease looks like for each and every person yeah. what the what is it called the treatment plan looks mm-hmm. like for each and every person and you're not taught that necessarily so i remember in amani i may, i'm going to talk about it a lot because let me tell you hey they taught me a lot <laughs> So I mean there was a lot of practical there were a lot of practicals there was a lot of um pseudo therapy sessions you had to do a lot of group work where you're doing therapy and then you had to open up so like I'm pretty sure my class knows a lot about me so there was a lot of opening up there was a lot of um you're giving therapy sessions you're receiving there was a lot of supervision I loved my supervisor um there was a lot of on in on hand training that allowed you to now understand oh okay so i've been taught maslow's hierarchy of needs in my degree this is how i can put it during yeah. my session yeah. and that's what our money taught me yeah. they taught now a lot of okay all these theories you guys learned this is actually what we mean by by you know by learning these things you need to learn and i think that's where a lot of the institutions need to bridge the gap because four years honestly versus a nine months it was a nine month course honestly a certification for nine months i think i would have preferred to have all that information in the four years i've been going to school versus the nine months i was in acti and just you know just allow even if one year for somebody to now bridge that gap between the theory and the actual practical and actually yeah. train them and that's why i wasn't i feel like we there's a completely big gap and number two information on how to transition from that world into the working world yeah so you've come from the theory world okay then what do you do step one when now you're going to practice psychology in an institution or start your private practice i'm yeah. not saying you know feed us the information but something like being part of a governing board honestly i never heard of it <laughs> i didn't you hear know, of uh, it until I, yeah uh-huh. that, that is very validating because uh, just, just uh, i think 
less than less than four months ago, I created a video on um, how to become a psychologist in Kenya and the governing bodies and where you need to go after you graduate and your practicum. And it has re received so many views. I am like, yeah. Hiya. okay, this was a question. And I, I did it on a whim. I was like, let me just create a video, you know. I, I was very surprised that this is something, um, because people now have been emailing me. They're like, oh my gosh, thank you. I, I didn't know where I was supposed to start. I just graduated. I was so lost. Thank you. I found your video. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, mm. this was a natural question. This is a question, and by the way, it it it, it kind of even the question of okay, where do we go for internships? I'm like, oh, that <laughs> question I answer it so many times in my DMs. I have it saved on my clipboard, my copy paste clipboard. Yeah. I'm just yeah. like paste pen. <laughs> Here they are for it. It's the names, the phone numbers, where they are located, everything. What they need from you? When do they host their interviews? Somebody asks me, I copy paste and send because it's yeah. be because there was no one to tell me, and that was the other issue I was having. Um, okay, it's something I'm liking now about the psychologists I know. Mm. It's there's no gatekeeping of information. Yeah. Now. Now. Which is a bit sad. It's three years later for me, mm. but now I know. Because in 2022. I just felt like clapping for all the young psychologists. I was like, "Thank you," because I was not understanding why information was being gatekept. What was that about? What was so? It's, exactly. There was also a lot of that. There was a lot of gatekeeping of information. Now there is a lot of psychologists. I know Marianne and her YouTube channel. Hey, may I just send? I always send my clients to her YouTube channel. I'm like. You have a question about this Marianne has done it. You yeah. know, if you have uh, a problem in this Marianne has done it. <laughs> Just go check her YouTube channel she's yeah. talked about yeah. it. Now you you've done it also. Now for sure I'm going to look for that video and just keep the link on my <laughs> clipboard <laughs> if anybody cuz yeah. I've been asked that question over and over again yeah. I'm kind of happy that now finally psychologists are actually giving out the information but let me tell you when I started off yeah. even that thing for uh get governing board i think that was the one that just threw that me off i was one. like what was one. <laughs> <laughs> like a uh, governing yeah. board what yeah, <laughs> somebody, yeah. Somebody, mm -hmm. said, uh, somebody said a previous guest said that uh, the, the mental health profession especially in kenya feels like um members only club um you get left out a lot uh many people don't know where to go for many things and um for example i, I mentioned the way that uh, sometimes you will see things posted on twitter about psychology events and stuff and you're like oh wait this happened but you guys are posting yeah. that it has happened you're telling us oh we went last week we went to this place and we did x y z we were like post before you go we come i'm i'm talking and it yeah it's very it's very exclusive and it's very exclusive in that and it's something i've gotten very angry about Me when I've, i'll mention I'll, I'll, i'll mention sarah again the reason why i'm getting angry is because um sarah has been in the psychological field for a while right and she's she's been the reason why i was able to start off because i was just following her i was just following hope well the entire time when i was starting my yeah on so I'd, i'd dm them once in a while for questions i don't think it used to take them two hours to answer me honestly mm. and then not only that is the amount of support i don't think we've ever met i've never met sarah in my life and the amount of support i get from her whenever i post anything absolutely anything is I and in my head I'm like what is with this exclusive information I need to learn from anyone I have like five information hubs it's therapy with nuru kwanza yours you, you I, I've added you because I saw you when you were now doing Marianne's yeah. uh, interview yeah. I added you onto my list um Marianne Marianne calls to do her youtube videos she's very active on linkedin so if you need to know anything linkedin yeah. is the best place to learn um well Sarah Mwindi and Hope Well Counseling and Jipende Wellness. Yeah. Those are my information hubs about anything psychology. Now these yeah. other people it's so exclusive you will never know. You'll just see last week there was this thing that happened this event that happened somewhere. And I'm like what about the younger psychologists who are new to the field? What if they wanted to come? They, How would they know? Yeah. Yeah. How would they know? And then you're also charging copious amounts of money for tickets to these events an undergrad is not going to pay 6500 to come and sit with a panel who does not resonate with them in any way whatsoever even they'd rather come to the yeah but yeah, honestly <laughs> i'm not going to pay 65 <laughs> i'm not paying 65 for a ticket no 
And yeah. I'm like, you know, because I, I get updates from Kenya Psychological Association on my emails about yeah. um, events. They've start, they had started last year. I don't know what has happened this year. They've gone quiet. Yeah. But events, um, what else? Uh, uh, trainings and stuff like that. And I look at the amount of money they're charging and I'm thinking, okay, this is for the PhD psychiatrist and psychologist. The one who's just finished undergrad, where are they getting 16K for a two-hour course? You know, where are they getting, yeah, six, five for an online event? You where are they going to get them? Don't come through. That's what, that don't come. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I'm, you know, it's a bit unfair. And actually, that's been my biggest issue about it. And then it becomes even a bigger issue because there's this segregation. And it was funny. It was one of my clients who actually mentioned it. She said, she was like, I follow a lot of the younger psychologists and there's this big divide between you guys and the older, the ones who have been in the psychological field for like 20 plus years. And I'm yeah. like, because there's segregation. We can't afford to join them. We can't, there's nothing. You can't, <laughs> you can't afford, you can't afford to interact with them. That's the problem. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's really sad. Um, on, a, on a very serious note, it's quite sad because um, we, we are the people who are going to inherit some of these things and um, yeah. we, we are going to be the people if uh, at some point they, they will retire, they will get out of the mental health field. We are the ones who are going to be left with, with, with that and if, um, if we have created the perception that mental health is this exclusive club for it, ex people, yeah. it's going to make our work harder because now we need to keep convincing people that mental health is important. Yet we all know yeah. that mental health is important. It will continue feeling it's, like that thing where you're saying you need to keep uh, justifying why your work is necessary. Why? Yeah, you have to keep. Yeah, hey, yes. It becomes that's possible. very true. Yeah. It becomes mm. Mm. Um, wow, that has been fantastic hearing that experience because I know there's somebody who's listening and they're going to go like, "That is me." Thank you for sharing. Yeah. I feel seen and heard, and I think yeah. uh, with this with this entire thing, we are trying to make sure that mental health professionals realize you do not have to work in isolation. Um, we are creating this network so that you can pinpoint a mental health professional here and be like, I want to collaborate with that person. So how can I get in touch with them? So, so how can you get in touch with them? Yes, to cooperate for you, please do not yeah. suffer inside. <laughs> Don't it's suffer. Just, just DM me, by the way. Me, I'll be very happy to answer your questions. But, I may not be fast, but I'm going to answer. There is no way I'm going to refuse to answer. May I know that struggle? Ah, <laughs> Please yes. just DM for me, sure. I'll answer. <laughs> yeah. For sure, for sure. Um, I'm very curious about, uh, you mentioned uh, uh, that you've been working for, uh, for the last three years in this field and all that. Um, I'm sure you, you've worked with many, many different types of clients. Um, what, what kind of clients do you work with exactly? What kind of mental health issues do you Ooh. address? Uh, you mentioned that therapy for kids is hard for you. Maybe you can touch on that. Why is therapy for kids uh, a no-go zone? Hey, so um, let me start with the yeah, therapy for kids. So when I was a guidance counselor, um, I think I had, as you can see, my aura doesn't really um, present as that serious teacher who <laughs> doesn't want to hear anything from you. Um, I was even worse. I think I had like almost white hair. No, I had, no, I, I think, yeah, I had like blonde dreadlocks or something and then color i just like mini color so i had a lot of kids who'd come and tell me like in the personal problems and i realized while they were talking to me like it was getting to my heart to the point where i couldn't really help them the way they needed because i'd i'd just be completely shocked that a child is going through all of this which would then make me try it would, you know the transference would happen during whenever they're trying to talk to me and I'm like, okay, this is, I'm not going to be helping these kids if I continue like this. So I ended up venturing into adults. Now, my, the main clients I actually have, it's quite weird. I have clients, university students, uh, second, third, fourth years, not first years. I don't, I barely have any first years. And then between the ages of 20 to 30, then we skip and then 38 upwards. So I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening between um, the 30 and 38. I don't know. But yeah, I, I know it skips a bit, then 38 upwards. I have a lot of clients there. And then a lot of clients who are in the university who have just started off in the working field. Um, I have a lot of... The funniest thing is I have a lot of clients in the accounting department, which I've never understood, which is quite interesting. I don't know if it's stress or something. And then marketing uh, in the marketing department. Those are a lot of where my clients come from. And, and what are mental health issues you mostly address? In oh, yes. 
Um, a lot of the times it's MDD, major depressive disorder, um, generalized anxiety. I have uh, bipolar, bipolar, especially bipolar. Um, and what else? I'm forgetting ADHD. Yeah. Um, yes, ADHD yeah. is another one. Uh, a lot of the times, the ones who are who have just started into the working field, it's just a lot of transitional therapy. You know how to transition from school life to work life. What do you need to do next? What are your goals? What did you envision for your life and things like that? Then now there's the people who come to me with mental illnesses now. Uh, but the the one I've treated the most is uh, MDD, then followed by bipolar, which I had never actually expected um, to be treating, to be honest. But yes, um, bipolar. Ah, okay, fantastic, fantastic, mm-hmm. um, awesome. That is good to know. I'm I'm very curious um, um about what what these clients have taught you about yourself, about therapy, mm-hmm. about the work of being a therapist, um, about people in general. Yeah. What have you learned yeah. from clients that you're like? If it was not for these clients, I would be ignorant in this particular thing. If it wasn't for my clients, I would be very ignorant of what high functioning actually looks like. Oh, God, there, yes. Uh, I have clients. So there's high functioning, the theory. Yes. And there's high functioning, somebody who's compartmentalized so well that they don't realize that they are actually not okay. Like they've put everything in a box properly and they've sealed Kabisa. it and they put Kabisa. it away. Kabisa, yeah. to the point where even trying to find the box, first of all, let alone open it, is a mm-hmm. whole process in itself. Yeah. Um, and it made me realize high functioning. There are people who are high functioning to the point they they don't even realize they're high functioning. And for you, it's yeah. very easy for you not to realize that they're for you to realize that they're high functioning it's actually very easy for you to just cross over it and be like oh yeah this person is fine actually and until you actually continue talking to them and realize oh what has happened here is this person i'm a super box Bali. she has thrown the yeah. box there <laughs> um another thing they taught me is you're doing better than you think you are because <laughs> mm-hmm. i've i've been caught off guard during sessions I'm thinking the session has gone so terribly. Then at the end, I'm told, oh my gosh, this has helped me so much. I've taken note of everything you've told me. If you can, send me an email of what you've told me. And I'm like, what? (laughs) Where did you get the information to write down first of all? Because I feel like I told you absolutely nothing during this session. And that's what they've taught me a lot of the times. A lot of the times, I'm doing better than I think I am. Which is kind of nice to hear from them. But yeah, that was... (laughs) Yeah. That was actually my favorite lesson that I learned from my class. And I still learn up to now. I sit down. I'm like, hey, this session, wow, this poor client will feel like they're, they're not getting their worth. They're not. <laughs> they're not. Yeah. Then at the end, like, hey, Anastasia, I'm so happy. I've gotten some points here. I'm going to. And then I'll send you an email on what I find out. And I'm like, really? Okay, that's good. That's amazing. <laughs> Because I have no idea what I've just told you, yeah. and I'm happy for you. Yeah. But yes, and, and that's what I've learned. Yeah, yeah. So that thing to, uh, where where um, people keep asking, "What does success look like in therapy?" And I keep telling people yeah. the same answer: It looks different for different people on different days. For different it will look different from a therapist's perspective. Uh, it will look different from the client's perspective. Yeah, it will look different from session to session, and um, so, yeah. it's okay. It is yeah. okay. It doesn't have to look like somebody else. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So and also, yeah and the third lesson i've learned from them is uh, if they need you they'll come to you which is very yeah. interesting yeah and 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 I, it was something i learned i think in my second year my first year i was very you know trying to make sure they need me and then and then i realized genuinely if your clients need you they will come to you even the one who's disappeared for months on end yeah they'll come back they come yeah. back <laughs> they when they need out. you as long as they have your information they always yeah. come back yeah. they always come back and it has not you know don't take them as going as anything to do with your capabilities especially if you haven't received your feedback maybe genuinely life has life and they, they don't have time to come for sessions and then finally they figured out the the way uh, life has been going so now they can come back to therapy 
Yeah, yeah. I keep telling clients, and I remember I, I put this in the book because I realized it was a very important thing. So, um, uh, for those who don't know, mental health professionals listening, um, I wrote a book for beginner therapy so that you don't struggle too much. <laughs> and in the book, there's one thing I said: your worth as a therapist is not measured by um your client's uh, progress. Your client's yeah. progress is very independent from you. And if you you are thinking that because your client is going in this direction, that you know that is, that that determines who you are as a therapist, then that is your ego speaking. Your ego is telling you that you have control over the outcome, and you really do not have yeah. control over them. The client will get better. Um, the client will get better at their own pace. They will get better, which whichever way better looks like to them. And you, as yeah. a therapist, you must facilitate. <coughs> Leave on your place and accept that that is the place you have. You play a very small part in the client's entire life story. Yeah. Sometimes it can feel like a it's a it's a big part because oh my gosh, they mm-hmm. have to see me every week. Bana, I'm very important, my friend. The week has 168 hours, and you're what? only being seen for one and hour. One, hundred and fifty-seven hours left. Yes, and I love. I, I actually use that in the side of the client actually, yeah. when because of course clients get very impatient about mm-hmm. their progress, mm-hmm. and I'm always like, you've tackled with this issue since, let's say, let's assume you are ten, yeah, right, and you've come to me and you're twenty-five. You know, this is fifteen years. Right, fifteen years is over ten thousand plus hours. Yeah. You see yeah. me one hour once a week. Yeah. So the ten thousand hours you've been tackling this problem this way versus the one hour we've been challenging you to tackle it a different way. You're not going to heal. <laughs> yeah. The way you yeah. think you're going to heal, yeah. and that's actually I'm actually I like this now other version for uh, therapists. Yeah. You only 168. No, you're not that important. Let me just be that. You're not that important. That important. Yes. Yeah, the work you do is very important, but don't don't think that your client's life rotates around you. You're not the center mm-hmm. of the universe. No. Your clients have different things to do in life. They have been doing things at a, a different without you for a very long time. They have been for very long time. in mm-hmm. your absence. Yeah. And they have just met you. So Do not let your ego lie to you that yeah. oh my god the client they are not healing they, we have not tackled family history in the last two weeks oh my gosh the progress is not going, yeah. well. no, it's going the, well it's going well, well. just okay. relax breathe yeah. take a breath yes i yeah. agree take a breather actually yeah i'll be doing that also <laughs> in my other talks <laughs> it's like not about you <laughs> yeah it's really, really not about it's you. not about you Yeah. Yeah. So okay. It's about you. Don't let her people mm-hmm. make you think that yeah. it's about you. And just be very aware of those feelings when mm-hmm. they come up. This is for therapy. So be very aware when when you start feeling like uh your client success is uh, you, your your success and your worth as a therapist is pegged on your client's progress. Please it is yeah. not your therapist to do your work and do the best you can, but remember your mm-hmm. client is an individual an adult human who has their own way of life that has nothing of to do with life. Yeah. yeah and that is totally fine that is totally fine um this uh, this has been fantastic so far um let me let me take a minute to shout out uh, some guys who are here wakesho yeah uh fantazania fatanzania i don't know how to pronounce your name uh abad trips clothes line sandra bosibori um rano ran, ran out of i ran out of sugar <laughs> i ran out of sugar hi <laughs> Um Michael <laughs> Chendi Smita Patel uh Kadew Esther eh Tan, Tan, Tandi Kalibo thank you for being here Salama Mines eh Miss Ashley Kioko thank you for being here Noela Mbua uh Nimo Kendi Kature Voke Bo, uh, Boina Kiru and Therapy with Tattoo uh, that, that's your group yeah um and and uh Joe Kamau Good news mental therapy space uh BNM Safe Zone Global Safe thank Zone. you for coming through yeah. um I I can see a question from Boina Kiru and she says that she's just uh, is it yeah she says uh she just finished a, a practicum doing an MA in counseling psychology and most of the clients I saw are those in the police force uh glad I, I don't know if there's a question there but it's not a question um, it was just a comment a comment oh, okay fantastic yeah. thank you for sharing that um uh, mm. you can tell me if you have any questions please drop them we'll be answering them before we end this live um if you have anything specific you want to get from um Anastasia please uh, send it through we'll be reading the comments in due time yeah. so yeah um 
I still have a bunch of things that I've not asked you, and um, we will have to answer them all of them because uh, today is your day. Yeah. And, um, yeah. I'm, I'm very curious about uh, your own personal experience with therapy. I know you mentioned that you went to therapy. Uh, the thing with um, insurance and mental health. Maybe we'll touch yeah. on that at some point. Um, what was your personal experience with therapy? What What led you to? Okay, actually, let's backtrack. What is your personal experience with mental health? Uh, yeah. Okay. Everything demystify any myth that anybody is seated thinking mental health professionals do not struggle. I lost you a bit. Uh huh. What did you say? Yes. I said, please demystify the myth that mental health oh. professionals do not struggle by telling us your story about your mental health. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you guys right now, mental health practitioners do struggle. I am one of them who had been struggling with uh, MDD. I was actually treated for it. So what had happened was, um, in my second year of uni, I was really struggling. Hey, I was struggling and not with academics, with my own mind. And it then affected my academics. And I am somebody who loves school. So I think that was my key indicator that I wasn't doing well. Um, I, I was flunking. In, okay, I wasn't flunking, but I wasn't doing as well as I usually do. And I found myself just doing the bare minimum just to get by, which normally I don't do. I love learning. So I love the whole research process. And yes, please don't come for me. I actually like the examination process and doing papers and all that. I actually like sitting down in class and listening to a lecture. I like it. So uh, I realized, hey, I'm, I'm struggling because I, I'm doing the bare minimum for everything, you know, just making sure I attend just enough classes so that I'm not flunked, um, you know, just doing the pass mark, you know, just doing enough to get the pass mark and move by. And I went to the counseling center and hey, I did not like it at all. Me, I think they were more fixated on the fact that I wasn't failing and therefore I must have been okay. So I then ended up, uh, my mom is on who actually ended up where she was working. They have like a whole. Fast for therapy there. But then where they were was so out of my way from school and then home. It was just too much work. So I found another therapist at Oasis Africa, not, not uh, the specialty hospital, the actual um, therapy institution that's in Hallingham. And I had an amazing therapist from there who I really dearly miss beyond anything. <laughs> I miss her so much. So um, she's the one who then found out I'm suffering from MDD and acute anxiety. She wasn't really sure whether it was anxiety. So I ended up, she ended up referring me to a psychiatrist, Dr. Catherine Siengo, who then diagnosed me with MDD. She didn't really diagnose me with anxiety. I had been on antidepressants since 2017, September till 2020. I had been on meters and then once in a while, Alzolam, like back and forth. I'd be on it, then off it, on it, then off it once in a while. And then um, that first therapist, I um, I stopped seeing her because number one, she moved. And then number two, it was during COVID. I had her for a very long time. It was during COVID. Uh, and they didn't really integrate online therapy into their therapy. And therefore, I couldn't go for therapy anymore. Um, then I ended up at Chiromo uh, Mental Health Hospital. And then I found another therapist who also I also miss dearly. <laughs> she was amazing. Um, who then kind of challenged the diagnosis a bit. In 2020, at that time, I was already being weaned off of my antidepressants. So by the time I met her, I think I had actually com completely come off the medication. And then she challenged the diagnosis. She was like, um, I do not think what you're suffering from is this. Unfortunately, I ended up parting with ways with my first psychiatrist. I don't remember. She was also not very available. I found another psychiatrist who then diagnosed me with ADHD, which was quite interesting because hey, well, my therapist, she was not a lie. She was just like, mm -mm, it's not MDD. And she kept saying it. And I'm like, I've been on antidepressant for like three years. You know, I'm, I feel better. Then she's like, yes, depression can be a part of something else. You know that, right? And I didn't know that at that time. <laughs> 
I didn't know that. Me, I just thought it was it's either depression or or something. And so she kept saying, you know, your depression might be there because of something else. And I was like, oh no, 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 it, it's MDD. I've been treated for MDD. And she's like, mm, mm, mm. So finally, when she got in touch with this psychiatrist, she was like, do a test again. This is ADHD. Wow. Okay. Fine. Um, but the psychiatrist didn't believe I needed to go on any medication. Um, he was like, mm, it's okay. You just continue with your therapy. I actually genuinely think the antidepressants did whatever they needed to do. Um, in terms of functioning, you're actually okay. But you'll find because you're off the medication, you'll be struggling a bit with some things, which is true. Um, but yeah, ever since I've been on therapy, and unfortunately now my therapist again, um, she went to now finish her master's. So she wasn't really available. I have another therapist now who I also equally love. Thank goodness I've had good therapists because I hear the horror stories from my clients. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so happy I've gotten good therapists. So yeah, uh, it's been hard in that, first of all, finding information. Number two, being very open about it. I wasn't very open about it before. And nowadays I just talk about it like it's any other thing that has happened to me because I think that honestly, if it wasn't for the fact that I actually came to terms with the fact that I was struggling, I would have still been struggling up to now. And I think that was the hardest part of suffering from a mental illness was actually just accepting. I was in this denial for, for like two years of being on those med- on that medication. I was on serious denial. Even when I was on the medication, I was like, mm, I'm not depressed. I'm not depressed. And I found out it was actually making me feel way worse and get worse because every time I was in this denial phase, my dosage would go up. So I started to notice like, okay, I'm I'm really not helping myself. So yeah. Finally, I accepted and slowly by slowly I'm off the medication. Yes, I'm functioning. I could say I'm functioning. Um, once in a while, I have my terrible days, which I have learned through the hard way that I need to take a chill pill <laughs> on the hard days and not push myself because I really cannot help my clients on my hard days. And it took almost a nervous breakdown for me to actually realize that I need to take a chill pill on some days. And just relax because I, me being like this, I'm not going to help anyone when I'm like this anyway. And I used to really beat myself up about it. Uh, but nowadays I really don't care. If I'm having a bad day, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to force myself. But yeah, it's been a very interesting journey about learning how to maneuver my own mental health and other people's mental health. Yeah. Um, I'm very disciplined when it comes to going for my personal sessions. I don't play with those. I, 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 let me go for my personal sessions. It's okay. Um, yeah. So it's been an interesting journey of, yeah, maneuvering my own mental health and other people's mental health and, you know, trying to make, make sure I'm keeping myself, my own mental health as a priority over my clients so that I can help my clients. Yeah. 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 Mm. Um, um, that is, that is quite the experience. Um, what was the, what was the hardest part of, uh, of, of, of this struggle do, from 2017 to 2020? What can you remember as something that was, um, the hardest part of this entire experience? It was learning that the coping, the, the, my personality was just a bunch of coping mechanisms bunched into one. <laughs> And being constantly asked what I like, who I am. Oh, those questions used to drive me insane. You know, what I liked, who I am, you know, what a selfish me looked like. I remember my, my therapist constantly asked me that question and she used to drive me insane with that question because I'm like, stop asking. <laughs> stop. <laughs> I don't know what that looks like. And you know, I don't know what that looks like. Stop pestering me about it. And it was had it was very hard to find out that i had no personality at all like there were these little things that i had to myself but a lot of the times it was just a bunch of just coping and defense mechanisms bunched into one that i decided was my personality and the process of constantly being challenged on that i used to come out of those therapy sessions so exhausted and i had cried like almost the entire session and then i come out so exhausted i don't even want to talk to anyone i'm just like <laughs> my therapist has asked me such hard questions i'm tired <laughs> i think that was the hardest part the second hardest part was actually seeing the difference i know a lot of people are like when you get better it's kind of nice to see but what it was to me was realizing how badly off i had actually been doing 
So I remember the first day I made my bed. Like I remember it so well. I remember waking up and it was in August. I remember it so well. It was in August. I remember I was one and a half years into the medication. I woke up. I was like, oh, I've woken up. I hadn't even put an alarm. I had woken up. I just took my pillows. I put them on the bed. I fixed my sheets. I fixed my duvet. I tucked in everything. And then I put out my clothes. And then I just, I remember standing in my room and I'm like, what did I just do? And then it hit me then. I remember crying because I was like, was I doing that badly off? Like, was it that bad? Because I had never made my bed. I never used to make my bed. I never used to clean my room. Nothing. You could not convince me to pick up my clothes off the floor. Like, there was nothing. Nowadays, if I see even a shirt I wore yesterday on the floor, it's either going into the hamper with the washing machine. There's no difference. It's going. It needs to get out of my floor. And I hadn't realized how... And it was painful because then I started to sit down and think all these years that have passed and how badly off I had been doing and how many things I had missed and and how many things that passed me by because I wasn't able to live in the moment because I was in this constant survival state. It was very, very painful. I know a lot of people look forward to that day, which I'm happy for, but for me it was really painful to realize how much I had been. Oh, you're back. Yes. Um, I, I, I think I heard yeah. uh, the last part where you said that you real, uh, it was painful realizing how much uh, you'd missed on, out on. And um, I think yeah. there's, there's, um, the, it's, it's something that is quite important that people need to realize um, there's a process of grief that goes on with healing. Because uh, with healing, you realize things and you also lose things. You lose parts of yourself that you thought were parts of yourself. Kumbe, they were just yeah. um, fragments of stuff that came from left, right, and center and landed on you because you're like a magnet and you're attracting things all, all over the place. Uh, the place. Um, but yeah, realizing that it's a process of grief and it is okay. And mm. it is for yeah. a better you because now you become a better version of yourself, you become a happier version of yourself. And you mourn those, mm. um, you, you, you grieve those parts that have you've lost, you've missed out on, the life you've missed yeah. out on. And realize it was part of the process of getting you to where you are. So um, I'll, that's, that's, quite a, that's quite a story. Um, what was the... Um, you, you experience with medication. There are many people who are anti-medication. There are people who are pro-medication. Um, what, with your experience having lived, been there, done that, what is your uh, stance with medication? And um, the psychiatric field has been accused of being uh, the weakest link in the mental health profession. Uh, where are you on that story? <laughs> I, might, I, might be, I might be with those people who are saying the psychiatric field needs a bit of work in Kenya. And this is because it... F- it felt like people, my experience, it felt like they didn't know what to give me. Like, <laughs> that was my issue. It felt like they didn't know the dosage on what to give me. They didn't know the brand. They did. There was a lot of I don't knows and maybes. And I understand that the psychiatric field is a very hard field. I understand. But I feel like we have so much work to do. So the other reason I feel like this is because I feel like I was lucky in terms of the medication I ended up on, that it worked and I got the, the, the desired outcome out of it. I have friends and family diagnosed with similar things and then their medication is all over the place and their healing is all over the place. And I feel like we haven't really figured it out and we're very, we give out the same medication. If it's not Meritas, it's Alzolam. If it's not Alzolam, we give such... I can, you know, like to the point where even my clients, those are they, my client, one of my clients asked me, "Can you know the psychiatric field?" And I'm like, "No, we give the same <laughs> medication all through." And I'm thinking, I don't think the same concoction of medication is gonna work for person A the way it worked for person B. But we still keep doing that. I think we need more work, and therefore that's where the anti-medication people come in because. Genuinely, we haven't shown in the psychiatric field, we haven't shown that we know that there's a variety of medication. I learned the other day that there's a specific pill for people who have ADHD, like specifically, specifically for ADHD. And the only reason why I know this is because I have a cousin who has ADHD and she's on that pill and I researched on it and it is specifically for ADHD. I didn't know that. Me, I knew that I was just going to give her a concoction of the same Alzolam, Murtas, what, 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 usual line of medication. And then, but these are pills specifically for it. And that's how bad it is because we're used to giving 
it's not the generic medication but it is the generic medication in that it's what we always give for the same combination of um uh, illnesses so if you have bipolar just know the antidepressant is going to be metas and then there's something else you're going to be given for sleep and it's going to be within the lines of these three medication there's no variety and what if it doesn't work and i felt I, during my uh, time i felt like there was no they, they weren't sure what they were supposed to give me the dosage or the medication you know a lot of the times there was this question of you're on i remember a time i was asked you're on 15 mg so do we up it up to 30 and i'm like you're asking me <laughs> Oh, I remember so that, is really that is really funny. <laughs> yes, I was I like um cuz I I remember hearing that question and I'm like you're why would asking you ask me, me why, why you what, ask me? okay what if I said I wanted 45 would you give me the 45 like I don't understand what the question is. Supposed to know who is yeah this is like can I on 15 um do we do it to 30 and I just looked and I was like you're asking me <laughs> like I was, I was shocked And I think that's why whenever I hear people who are anti medication I understand them when I hear people who are pro medication I understand them also because I would be pro medication if it wasn't for the fact that I'd be pro medication for the fact that it worked but I'd be anti medication because of the experience I had of getting to that point of it working like why are you asking me how many milligrams I should take um, I don't even know what this is <laughs> I even know what it is, is but yeah a lot of guesswork a lot of travel yeah it felt like there was a lot of guesswork and at some sense. point it made yeah yeah what is that at some point it made me actually question what yeah. i was on i was like yeah. okay i even did something and then you yeah. said go try this yes. see if it works and then come back yeah. and then they yeah yeah and then you're not given enough information about the side effects because i know matters uh, the number one side effect is gaining weight but they don't tell you that losing weight is even twice as hard or meters they never tell you that part mm. that you actually need to change so many things about your diet and your workout regimen for you to actually lose weight while you're on meters up in because you again the weight and you think you're just going to do the usual workout regimen to lose the weight and it's not that simple because guess what you're not eating more you're not eating more so you can't equate the workout to the amount of food you're eating you're not eating more you're just not metabolizing food as quickly so that you can sleep and that's <laughs> that's wow. the thing but you're not told that and that i found out from research i only found that because hey, that day i was told at 30 i was like i need to, i need to find out what this medication is i was like ah no i i'm being asked no and but yeah that's that is very sad because now i'm looking at it from the point of uh, uh, view of um, a regular kenyan who does not have first of all the, the the access to these research tools that we have on the internet maybe they are not even tech savvy like that that they can go and read yeah. uh, medical research and make decisions for themselves exactly uh, just a regular kenyan our, our regular brothers and cousins and sisters and and our relatives who are just regular people yeah. who do not have the, that, that know how of going to research medicine and how to it affects their lives and then being asked mm. questions and then being given these concoctions um it's quite sad uh, looking at it yeah. it's sad and um yeah. I, i just don't know i really don't know i am yeah. it's, it's just a sad i'm not a psychiatrist and i'm but actually the reason why i'm actually even getting more angry at them is the the psychiatrist my cousin has, is young i think she's 32 i did some research on her she's 32 and i'm like how did she end up with this specific pill you know it means she's looking into things from a different perspective cuz i i had no idea i was like what there's a specific pill for adhd wow this is interesting cuz i saw the medication i was like I, i've never heard of this what what is this and i said my research again and i'm like they made a, a pill for adhd these guys actually went out and made a specific pill for those who are suffering from adhd where was this <laughs> where was this but she's she's really young Yeah. 32 in the psychiatric field is really young. So in my <laughs> opinion I was just like okay, you know what? Fine. Yeah. Uh, we'll get there. I guess we'll get there, but yes. <laughs> yeah. A lot needs to be done. A lot more needs to be yeah. done. Um yeah. having having sat on on both sides of the couch uh, as a client and as a therapist. What have you learned from your because you're an outlier by the way. The fact that you love all your therapists and you found yeah. you to have stuck gold with all of them. That is a Yes, lot. I did. Um 
how what is your what is your what have you learned about being a therapist um uh, from your therapist and what have you learned from um as a client what what have you learned as a, as a client wow. um what i've learned as a, a client therapist is that my personal life still needs work even the, even though i'm very aware what needs work like i need i need someone else to tell me that it needs work and how to help me and yes to be honest unfortunately there's a hey, self awareness can be crippling and i need somebody to get me out of the crippling self awareness which is my therapist so that i can actually do the work that is needed for the things that i think need work so I know I need that other voice. I need that sounding board and that's what I've learned as a client therapist. I know what's happening with me. I know what's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I know what I would have told my clients <laughs> if they were in the same shoe, but yeah. I need that sound board. I need that other person, the other professional to tell me now, okay, <laughs> you need to do this, you need to work on that. Yeah. And yes, I am aware of what I need to work on, but hearing that from the therapist kind of really helps a lot. It helps a lot. <laughs> people forget that uh, uh, knowing therapy and being in therapy are two different things yes. um it, it's uh, especially even so there's uh, people who are non, non mental health professionals they're like but see you're a therapist yeah. you can just take care of yourself instead of going to and I'm like bro that was me in class there's me yeah. in therapy those are two different genres. the therapy please <laughs> not the same different people yeah and and it's it's the same i always tell you neurosurgeons can't do their own surgery so <laughs> yeah they have to actually be vulnerable enough to let somebody else do the thing so same as us we actually have to be vulnerable enough to have another therapist help us yeah and and what what have your therapist taught you about being a therapist are you a better therapist for having that experience because i think uh, being going to therapy is a great learning experience for mental health professionals yeah. you get to learn what, yes. uh, how to do therapy you get to model what is good therapy um you yes. get to see another master in their craft And, and you know we in the craft and i think never, yeah we never sit with we never get to see other people doing therapy we get to know it the therapy yes oh, they are therapists they do therapy but you've actually never seen it. and i you think never, yeah yeah and i think actually that's where um okay my second therapist was daniela and i think that's where daniela she might not know but that's where she helped me in a lot when it comes to my practice i got to see while i was doing my certification i got to see therapy in action well so at some point unfortunately while she was helping me i was also of like oh yeah during class i remember we learned about this while she started to help me but it actually i was like okay this actually works and i also she's also the one who taught me it's okay to sometimes cry with your clients and you know it's okay to empathize beyond the therapy session with some clients of course don't take it to heart your your clients problems are not really necessarily yours to deal with but to empathize to the point where you almost feel like a relatable human being and not just a robot with a notebook and a pen trying to note down the problems actually helps the the client a lot of clients so i i felt you know it felt it it feels good to see someone else in their field it feels good to offload a lot of problems <laughs> why is this it just feels really nice to just offload and just have someone there to listen to you because you you spend the day listening to other people it's kind of nice to have that one hour where it's all about you also yeah yeah uh, the work of therapy is not the easiest job many people forget that um yeah it's very true you have to get that time with your that one on one with your therapist and just get to um offload and vent and, yeah uh, deal with your own personal issues because we are all going through a bazillion things um everything that our clients go through we go through so yeah it's very important that we do that um uh, um you we 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 started in the beginning talking about tattoo and uh we never got to go deeper on tattoo oh, and, yes. um i don't think i don't think it would it would be good for us to end this conversation without having without talking about the big part of the work that you do so tell us about tattoo how it be, uh, how it became a thing where how you guys yeah. met and how yeah. you decided you wanted to start a business so, together so i'm laughing because i'm laughing because tattoo turn is turning to in march uh, march 7 and the journey we thought was be quite interesting but tattoo started off as i wanted to find a way to get therapists away from their 
you know, aside from what they are doing with the institutions or the organizations, I wanted to find a way for them to, okay, during that one extra hour, can you, you know, provide therapy for this one person at like half the rate you would have charged if you were working for the institution? Just a way to provide affordable therapy for other people. Number two, my goal is mentorship. It hasn't started yet, but that's another thing. I want to mentor undergrads from different institutions so that when they're coming out, they have a bit of a blueprint on how to maneuver the psychiatric and psychological field. They're not lost. And number three, I wanted it as a way to just gather the young psychologists. I'm going to be very mean and say the young psychologists together and actually create, you know, form our own crew, which it might be working a bit because I've, I've just learned we've created like a connection. Like we're now, you know, I've referred you to this one and this one. I get referrals from even people I didn't even know followed me. So I'm, I'm, I'm starting to realize, yes. So that's what Tattoo started with. Um, Sharon, my, my co-founder, we met in the first year of uni. We were actually, we, we started off as friends. We found out we had to say doing the same degree. So we just became really close friends. Um, Joanne, in my second year, I decided to be ambitious and do an internship in a school, uh, <laughs> in a kindergarten. And hey, oh, it was a lot of work. But anyway, <laughs> I'd work full time and then go to class from five to nine, which was hectic. Um, and that's why I met Joan Waweru. She was also a teacher there, an intern there. And I think she was doing it for her fourth year. Her, she was finishing school, and we had hit it off like from the get go. So it was really, it was really nice. So what I did is I didn't even warn them. I just put them in a WhatsApp group, and I'm like, guys, I am starting. Uh, private practice starting an organization these are the goals for the organization are you guys in i've just put you in this whatsapp group because are you guys in they're like yeah we're in what would we call it i said give me 48 hours i'll figure out a name i figured out a name and then they're like logo i was like give me 48 hours i'll figure out a logo <laughs> i figured out the logo and from then on they've been there with me in tattoo um you know growing tattoo and everything so sharon is more of the social media Joanne is a lot of the logistics. I am the planning. You know, I plan and then you guys know. I'm not very good at the other part of it. Eh? I come up with the ideas and then if you have information, please give me. I'm very good at absorbing it. You just figure it out. So that's how it's been. Um, So far, we've been able to do a lot. There was a time we did a collaboration with Soma Nawe. Two by four, we went to Darakanevi to provide psychosocial support to children, to people and children in high school and children in uh, a home. Uh, we went for Chiki Kuruka's event last year and we, just, we were just spreading awareness about tattoo, really. We did this whole thing where everybody writes um, a compliment about themselves. I was wearing this Manila t-shirt thing and then you stick on a compliment about yourself. It was really nice. It was so much fun. Um, this year, I am hoping to go to Kajiado County but this time, I think I won't keep it to tattoo alone. I'm actually trying to find a way to like call everyone. But I need to find the details first so that when I'm calling everyone, I have all the details on how this is going to go. Because I found that the Rakanedi thing was so much fun. I would totally love to do it with like more therapists. Because therapists are insane. They're so much fun. So <laughs> I would love to like pull in more therapists for it. Um, it's in Kajiado. It's with... Um, mutual friend of mine who started uh, a, a, a charity foundation for children, for ladies uh, or victims of GBV. And I don't remember the other one. I remember GBV. And they have a charity event in Kajiado. Um, so I wanted to see if I can just gather as many psychologists as possible who would be available to now come and provide psychosocial support, even if it's just sitting there and talking to like one or two girls. Because um, I saw the impact we had in the Rakanevi. I would love to now have more people part of that uh, thing. So yeah, Tattoo is really just this. For me, it's just this, it's <laughs> this organization that brings people together. So I'm bridging the gap between people who want therapists, affordable therapists and uh, the therapists themselves. I am the bridging the gap in information when it comes to undergraduates and maybe a master's degree student who would love to be a mentor um, uh, or a PhD student who wants to be a mentor as well. I'm also 
bridging the gap of charities who want pro bono services once in a while because you know that i can it was completely free actually we are the ones who spent the money to find an airbnb and fuel and food and all that so that we can just go and be with the kids and hang out with them and i saw how much it helped i was like okay yeah, this one i have to this year i have to like invite more people for these things so if i'm asked by any organization i'm just going to put it on blast of my stories and make let everyone know yeah yeah oh that's fantastic um uh we, how how um it, it, it this is private practice for you and um are you a full time private practice practitioner or do you do other jobs because uh some mental health professionals feel that um the work is not paid unless they are full time professionals in private practice i'm doing this thing um some of them feel that uh you you have to do 50-50 some of them spend an hour yeah. private practice and uh, as at the rest of the time in employment other jobs uh, for you what setup what kind of arrangements do you have so, so for me personally um it was in the beginning it was 50-50 because then yeah, it was not funding anything um <laughs> but uh, now i'm full time i'm a full time therapist it's completely yeah. full time hmm. um i'm not going to lie i'm still wanting to go into the 50/50 because they are peak season. So Kenyans are very interesting clients. We have off peak and on peak seasons for therapy. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I I want to find something to be doing during my off peak seasons versus yeah. um the on peak seasons. But for now I'm actually a full-time therapist. Um it's been it's been working. Uh I know on peak times during holidays I know Easter is around the corner so on peak in Akuja like I, Kenyans really don't like their families so on peak seasons are during holidays <laughs> <laughs> i remember um, december i had to like put my foot down and tell my like i'm going on holiday bye on holiday. like you guys bye. need to i need to go <laughs> yeah i know you guys don't like your families i know you guys are having a hard time going back to family but i also need to go back to mine i need to go bye i need to go and leave and i know bye. i know therapy yeah, Kenya is very interesting <laughs> yeah <laughs> But yeah, therapy in Kenya is very interesting. We have on peak season and off peak. I I don't know what that is, but yeah. it's quite interesting. So for now I'm full time, but I really want to now go back to 50/50. Yeah, um um I mentioned when you mentioned tattoo, you mentioned about the kind of work that you do and how um different the three of you have different roles in the organization. Um how do you balance being a full time therapist and also being a founder and um a, a manager of the work like doing work outside of therapy for your organization and also spending time doing therapy that pays the bills how do you balance those two skills how how have people who will be on your neck about your part of the job <laughs> have people very, let me tell you Sharon eh? Sharon and Joanna are very ruthless so i'm i'm one person who forgets very quickly like i'm funnily enough especially when it comes to tattoo i will forget things like i I've, i've actually been reminded about something like a couple of hours ago, hours ago by joan i was like oh my gosh we were meant to be doing this so have people who will keep you on your toes yeah. right number two, schedule these things as though you would schedule a session mm-hmm. i realize that works for me so you know for example if a client has booked from 1 to 2 you know 2:30 to 3:30 i've scheduled myself for something to do with my organization mm-hmm. if it's a meeting i was meant to prep for if it's documents i was meant to print if it's something i was meant to read on i schedule it as though it's a session so that i don't keep trying to prioritize sessions over tattoo because if tattoo doesn't exist the sessions will stop existing so i need to make sure i'm also doing that for myself yeah 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 i think that is very important um private practice is not for the faint hearted because it's a business at the end of the day and you have mm-hmm. to find a way to balance it and do the work that got you in the business in the first place um uh, what what's what one piece of advice do you have for somebody who is about to start something that uh, is similar to what you have like a private practice where they have the business side and they also have uh, the therapy side where they are the providers of the work uh, or somebody who is already in the practice and they are, they are they are trying to make money from therapy see clients but they also want to do these other things that the business requires like uh, partnering with people pitching themselves how do they prepare for those things how do they approach potential uh, people to work with um things along those lines how would you yeah what could you speak on that i would say okay for in terms of balancing between your work and actually the private practice the other parts of the private practice that need work 
scheduling let me tell you scheduling works just schedule schedule and switch on your notifications for your schedule don't just schedule make sure you actually get in notifications about what you need to do um the to do list that you have for clients have a to do list for your private practice as well um number 3 find someone to put your even if they're not part of the private practice have an accountability partner just make sure you have somebody who can keep you on your toes about the things you need to do because if you leave it to yourself trust me you just slack on a lot of things one will suffer uh, over the other so there's no need for that in terms of approaching pe- people for partnerships i would say <laughs> just approach them the people who would love to collaborate will respond i'm um, i'm very big on collaborations i me yeah, collaborate you you want to talk if i have the time we will talk imagine we will do the live we will do the interview we will do it i'm very big on collaborations i don't mind them the person who wants to collaborate with you will collaborate with you you will always find somebody interested in your niche so you go on ahead and just approach them in terms of making money there is always somebody who will need you specifically so if you keep that in mind you will make your money there is always trust me we are too many people in this world for you to feel like no one needs you in that first of all psychologists were not enough in my opinion i feel like we're not enough yet um we we still need a lot we still need a lot of people in the field so you will make your money it might be slow in the beginning for sure it's going to be really slow in the beginning right and it will feel like you'll never make any money from it but you will there is always somebody who needs not only your services but you specifically there's something about your personality how you are within the session um how you speak to people how you uh, give your advice how you you know understand how you listen how you that somebody would want to choose you specifically right so there's always going to be someone for you so you just need to be patient enough to wait for them to either come into your dms email you or contact you via your phone number you just need to be patient yeah um yeah thank you so much for speaking on that i'm i'm sure somebody is listening who is um in the private practice uh, uh, field and they're struggling <coughs> will get value out of what you've mentioned uh just mm. an important thing that i would like to throw out there there is an entire playlist on the business of therapy that i have done i will link it in the description box as we said don't struggle in, in silence where to start what to do um how to prepare for these things where to, how to register your company all those things please go watch that playlist uh once you watch yeah. the playlist you know but there's one question and we have left out in this conversation that has not been answered please come to the dms uh you can always find come. me here uh, infinity wellness or you can come to my other page which is safe space arena that is where i do my personal work and so tutafute tuko kwa mtandao please do not stop in silence yeah there's a lot of information. yeah don't stop in silence i agree yeah yeah mm-hmm. very true um this has been so fantastic um uh, i feel like um i i feel like i've known you forever because uh, you're so open and you're so welcoming and you you're so generous with uh with with your information and with your knowledge and everything this has been so fantastic hey. now, yeah. now now my my big question is all these things how do you um uh, deal with burnout and self care and making sure that you're the best version of yourself i know you mentioned that you do your own personal therapy and you're very serious about that you're very serious about supervision and you're very serious about taking time off and your chill pill days um mm. you know all those things what are some things some strategies you apply to make sure that you are at a one on a daily and and um, your clients are getting the best version of you your family the best version of you and you're living a life that you actually like I try to get out of the routine once in a while. So sometimes okay it's good to understand your routine it's good to be able to figure out the flow but sometimes that also becomes very detrimental to your well-being. If you're so used to in the morning you wake up uh, you start first session you take your break you do second session you go for lunch you come back you do your third you do your at some point it becomes monotonous. So sometimes breaking away from the monotony helps and actually this is where these other charity things come in all these other talks all these other things come in that i do i'm like okay today is thursday i have been invited for this i will actually take the entire day off so that i can focus on that just to break away from the monotony of what i am doing also number 2 i take my leave me that one i'm not very i will take my leave i will go on leave leave i will go i have to go on leave <laughs> i have learned the hard way <laughs> cuz last year in september i remember all three of us i had to put my foot down yeah 
seem to have lost you for a minute. Um, as we wait for um, Anastasia to get back, I can see Boina, uh, Kiru, you say having a good therapist for your personal therapy is very important for your journey, especially dealing with some triggers that come from being a therapist. That is very true. Um, if, if you don't get your personal therapy, you're going to end up uh, making your clients suffer. And you're also going to suffer yourself because uh, the work we do as mental health professionals is very, uh, is very heavy and yeah. really, um, can be all over the place. Um, yes, uh, Anastasia is back. Uh, then, yeah. uh, Anastasia, yeah. welcome back. I was just uh, commenting on what yeah. you said. Which yeah, I heard you. I heard you. Yeah. Yeah, so it's mm. very, very important. Um, you were telling us that uh, last year something happened. Oh, yes. Uh, last care. year, yes. I remember we, we had really been working. We hadn't realized that we had been working, I think it was four months straight with no break whatsoever. And I had to yeah. put my foot down. <laughs> Mm -hmm. With the three of us, yeah, and when we, I had to, I had to put my foot down and say, you know what, guys, in the next month, I need to know your leave days, and your leave days cannot be less than seven days because I need all of you to rest. So while you guys, one one person goes on leave, the rest of us are still working. Then the next, then the next, then the next. I need all of us to go and leave fast and decompress because we were borderlining. I know one of us was already burnt out, but we were borderlining burnout. You know, and also, yes, I agree with you, Boyna. There are some triggers that come with being a therapist. And that's actually how I realized last year we needed to go for a break because you get so mentally exhausted that even some of the issues you're tackling, even you're like, ah, I'm tired of tackling this problem now. If you get yourself to that point, you need to take a break, recalibrate, and then come back because mm -hmm. you're going to deal. There are some issues you're going to constantly be dealing with, right? Yeah. Um. But for you to be so exhausted with it that you have no, you're not feeling any value of, you know, uh, it helping them or still listening to this issue one one more time. You need you need a break. You need a break. Just take your break. Another way, journaling. Um, I'm not very good at journaling, but I do journal. Uh, a lot of um, I do either voice notes or writing. By the way, my journals are either voice notes or writing. I don't stick to writing alone. Sometimes I'm not really in the mood of holding a pen. Um. Uh, what else? Yeah, that's a lot of the ways I self care. It's a lot of I do a lot of one of my favorite self care is actually interacting with other therapists. Um, and it's just learning. Yeah, therapists are very fascinating. Different therapists and how they maneuver the the therapy world and the counseling world. And I like learning from yeah. that. I like learning how people tackle different issues. I like you know getting to sit down and learn about how there was this problem and this is another way we could have resolved it, right? Because therapists will do that. And then I always say therapists are fun because a lot of the times I tend to find therapists in like, I know rugby games I found. <laughs> it was quite interesting, actually. I found a lot yeah. of therapists. I was like, okay, hi. Um, you know, if you go to, <laughs> if somebody who goes to restaurants a lot like me for happy hour, you're most likely going to find another therapist there. So it's a very fun crowd. But it's a really nice way for you to learn how to solve different issues. And to also realize that the common, the problem you're having is a pretty common problem. And yeah. they're going through the same thing and kind of feels like there's this togetherness in this problem and, and you're given solutions to it or you're validated. There's a lot of validation you get yeah. from these other therapists who are like, yeah, 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 this problem you're going through it makes sense. You know, don't worry about it as, you know, this is, it, it happens a lot and it kind of feels nice. So that's also my other form of self-care. I, I like talking to other therapists therapists about my issues in the therapeutic field and then just learning that oh yeah it's a common problem <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's okay yeah. and this is how to solve it yeah yeah i think that's yeah. quite, quite important um, uh, um, um are there are there any specific tools that you use in your work that make your work easier i know you mentioned the scheduling um i'm, I'm assuming that involves google me uh, uh, google calendar or any other google uh, calendar set more calendar uh, Microsoft yeah, what, calendar. I use three calendars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I use three calendars. I use, um, because of, um, there's also the part that I also need to keep uh, coming to terms with a lot is that suffering from ADHD affects how I work a lot of the times. Yeah. I have to keep mm -hmm. my dopamine levels at a certain rate for me to be interested in still working. So yeah. it's a lot of color coordination, 
it's a lot of i'm not somebody who likes typing a lot so i use to to get me to type you know i have to <laughs> i have to have my so when you open my laptop, again oh there you are there you are yes. yes when you open your laptop yes when you when, I, when you open my laptop the first thing that comes on is google docs just to keep that in mind that there's something i need to type um yeah. there is a lot of my favorite feature on my phone is my notes app um if it comes to my head i have to write it down or else i'll forget like a lot of the things that i use is just for memory so i schedule yeah. to remind myself of something I write things down on my notes up to remind myself of something to do. I even send myself emails like I schedule emails to myself to remind myself that um there's something that you need to do today. Here is the email. And it's actually one of the only apps that has notifications on on my on my phone. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there's that. Um yeah, that's 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 about it. I usually don't use a lot. to um, you know help myself stay scheduled mm-hmm. and and your problem, your your practice is online most of the time um are there yeah. any specific online tools that are useful for somebody who is about to start a private practice online uh, how do you manage set that? more yeah. sorry set more calendly and link tree okay so set more for scheduling Yes. Um I I okay I like that more for scheduling. I've seen a lot of other therapists using Calendly. I think that's yeah. because you can but you can also link your set more to your Instagram so that yeah. clients can book directly from your Instagram. Um link tree just in case if you're the type of person who has a blog, the yeah. booking app, other private things you need so that you can have all of that there. um planoli i think that is the one sharon uses to plan content for her for our instagram page um canva or oh, canva is your best friend when creating posters yeah. and content yeah and canva premium has a place where you can schedule the content yeah um what else yeah i think yeah that's actually about it i don't know if there's anything else Yeah. Oh yes, I use Gmas um for those Gmas is um a notif- an emailing software that is attached to your Gmail yeah. that allows you to send mass emails but it will go individually. It will send individually ah. to the individual address. So instead of BCCing people, you use yeah. Gmas and then it sends to everybody individually. I love Gmas because let me tell you emailing people is a lot of work. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then especially if you're emailing the same message over and over again yeah, that's and and you don't want somebody to respond to the bcc um gmas has really helped um yeah the, the gmas has really helped in emailing um uh, what else yeah that's i think that's about it now for sure mm-hmm. yeah fantastic fantastic i'm sure somebody who's listening who's considering going into private practice and doing online stuff a lot of the online stuff these are wonderful resources yeah. and i think even beyond that uh, there are some there are counselors who are listening and maybe their uh, their uh, practices are both online and in person and they are trying to navigate the the digital world so i'm sure these are some tools that can make their work easier thank you so much for sharing those um so so tattoo offers affordable therapy um do you do you have any specific amounts of money that you charge that if anybody is listening they can uh, contact you for that uh, what are the tattoo does not tattoo does not in itself provide the therapy tattoo yeah. is the it's like a, it's like a hub so you come to tattoo uh-huh. and then there is a list of therapists that we have okay. who charge an affordable rate between this rate and this rate and then based off of what you want uh, most of the times what happens is that you end up being referred so from tattoo you say i want a therapist then uh, the person dealing with the account will then refer you to will get your contact details and have a therapist contact you give you the rates if the rates are not what you want the therapist is required to tell you okay there's this other therapist who is like this um let me forward your number to them they will contact you so that you don't have to start looking for therapists all over again yeah yeah okay, that makes sense that makes sense. 
So um, if anybody is looking for a therapist and um, uh, they have a specific uh, budget in their head and they are looking for a list of uh, therapists yeah. they can work with, Tattoo is a place to go to. They have uh, the resources. You just need to contact them and you're going to be connected to a therapist who is affordable to your budget. And so, yeah. yeah. Get in touch exactly. with Tattoo, guys. Listen and get in touch with Tattoo. Um, mm -hmm. We are coming to the very close of this uh, wonderful, wonderful conversation. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm very curious about uh, what what you want people to know more about uh, therapy, psychology as a whole in the Kenyan, in the Kenyan, uh, in, in the country that is Kenya and where therapy sometimes is seen as a luxury. Um, mental health is seen as a preserve for the rich and people from the West. Uh, what, do you, what do you want more people to know about therapy, psychology, mental health, um, the work that you do? Yeah, um, speak to them. As long as you have a brain, mental health is important. <laughs> <laughs> so if you do believe you have a brain, mental health is important. And I think not everybody needs therapy, but everybody deserves access to therapy. So not everybody will need therapy, for sure. Let's not lie. But everybody deserves access to it. Because once in a while, there's something that will need a professional intervention from a therapist who can now help you figure out what you need to go through. Another thing is that your therapist is not reading your mind. Even though it looks like it, we just figured out your pattern of behavior and we can predict what we're going to do next. Yeah. That's really what we done. Um, it's not us reading your mind. We just we are very pattern-oriented. We know how to read the pattern. And number three, your therapist is bound by confidentiality. So you need, if you are looking for a therapist, you need somebody who will provide for you a judgment-free zone who can ensure confidentiality and who, who, who will listen to, who will listen and not listen to respond, will listen. Just listen. They just need to listen. And that's yeah. all you need if you're looking for therapy. And yeah. you can have, there are a lot of therapists there yeah. who are willing to listen to you and give you that judgment free zone mm -hmm. for you to just come and offload everything you need to offload. Yeah. That is very important. That is very important, especially the not judgmental part. Um, nobody wants mm. to be listening to them uh, being judged for what they are or what they have said or who they are as a person. I think that is uh, an important and uh, wonderful aspect of therapy. So, as as, um, as Anastasia said, not everybody needs therapy, but everybody has to have access to it when they need it. So, yeah, the easy bit is available. Um, are there some resources you would highly, highly recommend that people check out for their mental health? Uh, some people who are on the journey the yeah yeah any resources you'd recommend so i'm big on podcasts yeah. my first favorite podcast is psychology today if you're if you're somebody who is in psychology you'll always hear these like the articles by psychology today yeah. so there is now a podcast by psychology uh, psychology today with dr scott barry kaufman he tackles a lot of topics with various psychologists psychiatrists uh, aside from mental health professions, professionals, even other professionals, but working in the mental health field. Um, yeah. Another person is Esther Perel. She's becoming very popular on TikTok. Oh. She's that uh, couple's therapist. Yeah. yeah, Esther Perel. I love her. Um, I love her personal journey with with uh, her husband. I love how she's very open with how quote-unquote dumb she was when she was in her 20s and, and, and dating this guy. I love how she's evol she's trying to evolutionize and the, 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 what is it called? The couple's therapy field. I like her a lot. I, I like how blunt she is, to be honest. I think that's why I like her. She's very blunt in how she tackles issues. So she has a podcast and the name, I keep forgetting the name, um, she, has, she, has, she actually has to. Uh, she has where do we begin and uh, where do we begin? I like where do we begin. Yeah. I really like where do we begin. There are not very many um, episodes. She started in 2017, but those episodes I'm pretty sure within two months will be done. If you're if you're an avid listener to podcasts, yeah. they're not very many. Um, and then my favorite book now is one by I think her name is Emma Webster. Mm. Uh, she she started a book in 2006. It was about heartbreak. And I don't even remember the name. It's about getting through heartbreak. Mm -hmm. um, she has a blog and everything, but there's a book that mm -hmm. 
got published in like 206 i don't know if she made a a, a, a newer version yeah. but it's about heartbreak going through heartbreak how to deal with heartbreak and not just from the relationship perspective um but every other perspective with friendships be it with parents and everything she tackles it and how to um how to deal with every emotion you're going through and every process you're going through i like that book it's not even big i like i actually like it because of that. it's not a big so if you're somebody who is not that much into reading and my website is your friend yeah. yeah but yeah those are my favorite resources oh fantastic fantastic thank you thank you so much for sharing those i'm sure somebody who's listening will get benefit out of them when they access them so thank you for sharing and thank you for bringing them here so yeah. today has been such such a wonderful session i thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed talking to you you're like one of my favorite yeah. people now and um I can't let you go before you tell people where to find you when they're looking for you. So somebody's listening there. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh. I want her to be my therapist. How do yeah. they find you? Or they're like, oh my gosh, I want to collaborate with her. How do they find you? Ooh. So if you want to find me, there are two places you can find me. Either email me on obonyoanastasia at gmail.com um, or DM me on mentalhealth underscore by anastasia dot ke. Those are the two best places to find me to be honest. I am more receptive there than any other place. If you try my phone especially with because I'm practicing, I'm not likely going to answer anytime soon. Even during my breaks, I'm more likely to look at my emails and my DMs than I am to look at my text messages. Ah. So, uh if you'd like to get to me, my email and my DMs are the best place. If I'm not answering there, therapy with tattoo on Instagram, somebody will answer. to you on that it might not be me but if you tell them that you're trying to get through to me they'll be able to help you fantastic that is awesome yeah. thank you so much for sharing that and thank you so much for that information yeah. um anastasia this has been so good i'm so glad that you got to come through and speak to us about everything that you that you're doing everything that you've been doing your work as a therapist your life as a human being um it's been fantastic we have learned a lot from you we have uh, mm-hmm. i'm sure these are therapists who's listening and they're like oh my gosh this has been the best the best so thank you so much yes. for being honest and being um being such a wonderful resource and for also for the work that you're doing with tattoo because i think that is work that is needed the work of looking for yeah. a therapist is difficult uh finding a therapist yeah. can be hard for most people, yeah. even for mental health professionals finding a therapist can be very hard and, it can uh, be very hard you, yeah you are putting them together in one place so that people can just come and find them in go and you're making it easier and i think um mm-hmm. um there there's a quote that i keep saying that got me into therapy and and i was going to ask about um for me the quote that got me into therapy is um uh, what 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 is the point of life if we are not uh, trying to make it less difficult for everybody else so uh, yes. that's the reason that i got into therapy and so my my final question yeah. for you is um why 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 did you get into therapy why do you do therapy why not any other profession <laughs> I love understanding how uh, the variations in which the human mind works. I love teaching people that also. And that's what I actually do a lot. If you ask my clients, that's what they're going to tell you. It's like Anastasia just focuses on teaching you how you end up there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and teaching you how to get out of it, out of it. I like seeing people's look on their faces when they figure themselves out. you know it's like oh yeah i did this because this happened and this was my course of action and this is what i should be doing when this happens and i love doing that i really enjoy it and i like just i'm i'm somebody who likes parting information i like giving it information and that's how i've um integrated it into the therapy sessions i also give you information you know you're having a problem with this let's learn about you let's learn about how you ended up like this and how this ended up happening and how you can change it Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um I can see uh what's her name? Uh Boina says amazing insights and Sasha I will get in touch with you. So look out for Boina. Yeah. Um Boina also says that the debriefing among therapists really helps which is very Oh, true. The, uh, mm-hmm. and that they love psychology today. This has been uh the best live. <laughs> Thank you Boina. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. <laughs> 90% of the bestness is obviously Anastasia she's a wonderful human being as you can tell thank so you. thank you so much Anastasia yeah. for coming through uh, i've had a wonderful time hosting you and i've had a wonderful time um, getting to interact with you and knowing you everybody who has been able to come to the live asanteni sana uh 
I will be putting all the resources that you have been discussing in the description box of this video, as well as other things that we may have left out that are important, mm -hmm. especially free mental health services that exist, especially for people in Nairobi. I will be putting that in the description box. Con yeah. Get that information, share it with a friend. Be, I usually say, uh, my call to action, be the first person who shares mental health content in your circle. Be that person who wants to um, say lazima atatuma keep your mental health yeah. by the end of this day. Yeah. Just know you're that person. Yeah. Be that person. So yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much um, for, for coming through. Anastasia, yeah. I would say, say for hearing at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can say goodbye. Thank you so much for having me though. Thank you're you very, very much. Welcome. You're very welcome. Yes. And you've been a wonderful guest. Um, everybody yes. else, I will see you next week for another session with another therapist yeah. and we'll get to know who they are, what they do and why they do it. And as usual, this is the mental health uh, Mental Health Professionals Network. We are trying to build something here for you all, and we hope that it is a wonderful resource for you as well. So thank you. Yeah. Uh, good night, and see you next time, next week, same day, same time. Yeah. Bye. Okay, bye-bye. Bye, Anastasia. Bye-bye. <laughs>